Welcome to HealthPod, your self-development hub on mental health, psychology, and spirituality. What are people doing to sabotage themselves? Mm-hmm. I give them the fitness program, I give them their workouts, they get the results in 12 weeks, a year later they go back to where they started. Fitness and nutrition was missing something. Mm-hmm. A bigger picture was missing. Mm-hmm. You need to feel your pain. The thing is, in this society, we are keeping ourselves so busy, so distracted, so much chaos in our head. We need to let that stuff go. We need to center ourselves. Mm-hmm. I could heal the sabotaging things I would say to myself. Mm -hmm. If I could do that personally to myself, a light bulb went off and I said, I need this for other people. Welcome to another episode on HealthPod. I'm Helene. I'm an empowerment and embodiment coach. And today we are here with Jennifer. And we're going to be talking about ice baths and breath work and how you can tap into the unlimited potential of your mind to have anything you want in your life. Let's tune in. Jennifer, Helene. welcome to HealthPod. Thank I'm you. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. Jennifer, you are an amazing woman. Thank you. A fitness so coach, you. an ice bath and breath work instructor, mom of three. Yeah. And I have looked up to you for so many years. Thank you. Um, through watching your journey on Instagram and just connecting via that route. And today we're really going to dive in to our union and your lifetime experiences. What was it that got you into fitness? I remember wanting to be very active in a very young age. Mm -hmm. I just had a lot of energy and I didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And being of a Lebanese background, I had very strict parents. And I wanted to be, you know, being raised in America, I wanted to be a cheerleader. I wanted to go to dance classes. I wanted, I was overwhelming for my own parents. Mm -hmm. And they came from a culture where they protect you, they keep you sheltered Mm -hmm. inside. I didn't know what to do with my energy. So it was fitness. And I just remember clearly at the age of 12, I started with as simple as jumping jacks in my bedroom. Then it got into, mom, I want to buy rollerblades. Mm -hmm. And then my parents were happy because the rollerblades could be in front of the house. So my activity was always in front of the house. So I just started getting more and more creative with my fitness with that. And it became a part of me. What was it that made you transition? Because I've recently seen you transition from Mm -hmm. fitness to other things. Do you want to share? Yeah, absolutely. I will call my transition being an addition because I really felt that fitness and nutrition was missing something. Mm -hmm. A bigger picture was missing. Mm -hmm. Everyone would do the 12 12 week transformation. A year later, reach out to me and say, I'm back to where I started and hire me again as their fitness coach. That was recurring almost every year. And I said, I was starting to dive deep then and go, what are people doing to sabotage themselves? Mm -hmm. I give them the fitness program. I give them their workouts. They get the results in 12 weeks. A year later, they go back to where they started, which means something internal inside of us needs to be healed before we go into and just think that fitness and nutrition can give us the perfect mind and the perfect body. Mm -hmm. Something is missing. And what is that thing that's missing? Something within our soul is missing and Mm -hmm. it needs to come out. It needs to be healed. It needs to be activated. It needs to be nurtured, loved. And it all comes down to self-love. When we're lacking self-love, we return back to old habits. Okay. And was there a specific tool you use? Breath work. Breath work. Was it a personal experience? It was a personal mm-hmm. experience. As a fitness coach and a nutrition coach, I went to a an event where I met a breathwork coach. Okay. He brought it to my attention. It was very new to me. I'm like, what is breathwork? Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, you need to come in for a session. It, he planted the seed. Let's mm-hmm. call it, it was plant, a seed was planted. Very unaware, I immediately go into researching what is breathwork. Okay. When I d- dove deeper into breathwork, I realized it was pranayama. Mm-hmm. And it goes deep, deep, deep back in history. And it's been existing all these years. Mm. And the more I dove deep and I gained the knowledge about breathwork, then I did a session a month later Mm -hmm. with this breathwork coach. Mm -hmm. It opened everything. It brought out uh, traumas from childhood. Mm -hmm. It came to the surface. And through the breathwork, everything felt like it was being healed. Mm -hmm. I could heal the sabotaging things I would say to myself. Mm -hmm. If I could do that personally to myself, a light bulb went off and I said, I need this for other people. Mm -hmm. I felt that... Personally, doing this work for myself, it opened a light for me so then I could be the light for other people that can't see. Yes. And that was eye-awakening. I don't want to lose the fitness and nutrition part of me. Yeah. That's a very intricate part to who I am. Mm-hmm. But in addition to that is the eye bath and breath work. And mm-hmm. I think it brings that holistic approach to bringing everything together. Yeah. So you mentioned the breath work. What about the ice baths? How do they come in? Oh, my gosh. Well, 
It was a progress, mm. I think, waiting to happen. Today's episode is sponsored by Empowered New You, where we hold women's circles, ice bath and breathwork events, and retreats across the world. You can find more information on www.drstefanos.com and in the description below. You'll be able to book your events with us as well as subscribe to our email newsletter where you'll be able to find more upcoming events. We hope to see you there. Because in 2016, I was introduced to Cryo in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And I became an ambassador for Cryo for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it's a chamber where you go inside for three minutes and the cold therapy uh, gradually builds while you're inside the chamber. And it gave me good vibes. I was very cold. I walked out and I had immense energy. And cold therapy talks about it. It uh, boosts your immune system, um, decreases inflammation. A lot happens. And then the combination, and that's how I started getting into it. I transitioned from cryo into cold baths. So I started doing cold baths at home. After the cold baths, I saw on social media, ice baths. And I started getting even more intrigued. I thought, okay, move from cryo. I've been doing cold baths. Ice bath seems even more extreme. And I, I believe I'm a very extreme person and mm-hmm. I go towards that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, f- I feel I resonate with extreme because it has something to teach us. And it's a guide. Extreme is a guide for us. Mm-hmm. So when I saw ice baths, I went for a uh, session and I did my very first ice bath. And it helped me sit with pain. Mm-hmm. It helped me sit with the pain. When I started experiencing the ice baths on a personal level, Two years later, I decided I needed to be an ice bath coach myself and to teach people what has taught me. And that is to be able to sit with yourself. You need to feel your pain. The thing is, in this society, we are keeping ourselves so busy, so distracted, so much chaos in our head. We need to let that stuff go. We need to center ourselves. I find the extremity of ice baths helps you to sit with yourself and be in the present moment. Deal with your pain. Breathe through that pain. Let it go. Release it. Forgive it. Welcome it and ask it to leave your system, leave your body, let it go so that you can transition to be the best version of yourself. That's amazing. I absolutely love ice baths and having experience in themselves and doing coaching behind it. It's, it's just, it is one of those things that you, 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 you overcome mm-hmm. the fear, the noise in your head and get to the other side of it mm-hmm. where you realize, oh my God, I'm capable of anything. anything. You're a mom of three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about being a mom of three. Being a mom of three. <laughs> well, my daughters are now, I have three daughters, and Jada's 21, mm-hmm. Lauren is 18, Emma is 16. And when you become a parent, you really are not aware of how tough it is. Mm-hmm. And when you think you're ready to be a mom, you're really never ready. <laughs> All of a sudden, you think having Children is the most amazing gift, and it is. It is the most amazing blessing. But when you have a lot of noise in your head, sometimes you're not able to be present. Mm -hmm. And especially between the ages of two to six, I found that very challenging. But they helped me to mature Mm -hmm. as they were maturing. Mm -hmm. So I really believe now raising three daughters and being a mother, you're never done. The the journey continues. You, You need to be present for them on a daily basis and whenever they need you. And... I am now able to sit present and enjoy them for all that they are and all that they are becoming. Mm. And all I can tell you is about being a mom. It's, it's, it is a true gift. It is a gift. But you need to release the clutter in your head so you can really enjoy them during the stressful times. Because I'm not going to sit here and say it was a piece of cake raising them. Raising mm. them. You need support. And, and don't be shy to ask for that support. I think moms think we have to be super moms. Mm-hmm. And we don't. We just Mm -hmm. need to be present moms. We Mm -hmm. need to be there for them, Mm -hmm. guide them while they're guiding us and enjoy them every moment that we have the opportunity to do. It's just a blessing every day. It is a blessing. And it's definitely um, a challenge Mm -hmm. when they're younger. Mm -hmm. That is definitely something that is... (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm personally You're experiencing in that now. so yeah exactly a three-year-old um, and a five-year-old any tips mm, when the situation gets intense walk mm-hmm. away don't engage too much in mm-hmm. it children need guidance okay if you lose your shit <laughs> they're gonna lose it too so we have to really be the mature person because mm-hmm. sometimes they really test us trigger us and yeah. we can really lose it and I do recall 
several times when my kids were young and by when I had three kids, five, three, and two, it was extremely challenging. Looking back to what I know now, oh my gosh. Yeah. looking back to what I know now, I just wish I was more patient. Mm. I wish I had breath work in my, in my <laughs> personal life back then. I wish I knew about everything that I know now, but I didn't, which means it was the journey I needed to go through to be where I am today. And it could have been their journey as well you know, seeing me as a mom and how maybe I transformed into a better mom as the years progressed. Mm. So maybe the kids can look at that and say, no one's perfect. But maybe looking at me now, they can say, my mom came this far. Yeah, there were tough times. Yes, we had a lot of timeouts. Yes, I lost my cool and I yelled a lot. Um, I, I, I own it. I definitely own it because mm. I didn't have the tools to know how to balance myself and center myself being a better mom. So all I can do is say is just give yourselves grace. Mm. We're doing the best that we can, and there's no manual to this. Mm -hmm. And our children will constantly trigger us, test us, lose our patience. But maybe that's what we're supposed to learn from them, yeah. to gain our patience, not lose it, to gain balance, not give it away, and to sit within our power to be the guides mm -hmm. that they need us to be. With the tools that you have today, how would you use them as a mom? I would have incorporated yoga more with our, my kids mm -hmm. and done it as a family. Mm -hmm. I would have been on the beach a lot more than I was so that we can mm -hmm. breathe in the fresh air, mm -hmm. look at the water, be on the sand, because that's really what grounds us nature. Mm -hmm. And I believe I did take the kids as often as I could to the parks. Um, I think more I would have maybe sat with them more, held hands with them in a circle. That would have been really nice. <laughs> Sat with them and maybe had more affirmations with them. Mm. I don't think I did enough of that. I do that a lot now. Mm. And remove from their language, I can't. Mm. Remove from their language, I'm not ready. Remove a few things from their language because I remember I used to, um, there was a lot of conflict, but you are ready. And it seemed to be a lot of conflict, resistance, and yelling. But you are ready. Stop saying that. I didn't give them the tools to understand what they were saying. Mm. Now that I know... I would have said to them, what you think you create, what you say becomes true, you know, and, and just guided them from a younger age to, to what I did not do back then. It was mm -hmm. more discipline. Do this, do that. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. what my parents did for me. I was mm -hmm. continuing that cycle. But you were being an example to them through your process of learning and growing. Yes. They were watching you. So yes. you were being the role model. You might have not been exactly what you were hoping mm -hmm. for them, but you were being you yeah. and learning along the way. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. Boop, boop. Hey guys, thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this video, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot to us. What would you say is your superpower? My superpower. Really just staying grounded, mm -hmm. not labeling myself whatsoever, mm -hmm. being very present in the day-to-day -day moments, experiences, and just enjoying every moment as it comes. I feel that could be a superpower. Mm -hmm. And some people use that word and maybe say being a superpower is doing many things and multitasking, but it's just the opposite. It's letting go of that belief that you have to have that power to do more and we have to do more and we have to be better. I think we are better. We're perfect. Mm -hmm. We're imperfectly perfect human yeah. beings. Mm -hmm. That's our superpower, mm -hmm. being perfectly imperfect. So I've seen a shift in you. When I first met you, you used to be, I would say like in that hustle mm -hmm. attitude, mm -hmm. whereas now mm -hmm. you were I speaking am, about being more grounded and centered you don't have to chase. You don't have to keep running. You don't, you have to take action. Mm. I was hustling. Mm -hmm. Like I was posting and I was engaging and I was networking and I was collaborating and I was exhausted. And the more I did, I think the less that was coming towards me, I was basically chasing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, well, if I can just take a step back, allow myself to attract the things that are really aligned mm -hmm. with me, mm -hmm my life could be a bit more centered and balanced. And that's what started happening. Okay. I started focusing on me, started focusing on what I felt I was aligned to do. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, the hustling started getting less and just the attention towards me came without me having to not do so much. So no more chasing, sense. attracting. Yeah, no more chasing, just attracting. Mm -hmm. What is aligned mm -hmm. with me was meant to be mm -hmm. for me. Okay. 
if someone would like to get into fitness, mm -hmm. what do you recommend? If it's someone who's never done fitness mm -hmm. before and doesn't know the technique and the proper form, I would highly recommend they need to get a coach. Because if you're just going to follow any video on YouTube or any coaches that you're not familiar with that doesn't have a strong background in technique and form, you could injure yourself. So if I was to give advice to anyone on how to get started in fitness, it depends what type of fitness you like. Find what works for you. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I'd hate to say that this works better than that. It's all about movement. So remove all that noise about fitness. HIT is better or circuits are better or boot camps are better. It's, it's about moving that's going to make you better. So find something that gets you to move, gets your heart rate up, that you enjoy, that resonates with you, mm -hmm. not that resonates with everyone else that's getting the results. What's, what's for you? It could be dance. So I get clients that come in that I just consult over the phone. I don't take them on as a 12-week client, mm -hmm. but they hire me on as a con for consultations. They're like, I don't know how to get started. So we basically, I ask the questions, what do you enjoy? Yeah. One particular client was like dancing. So I put together dance videos that I researched and found that she would like with the type of music she likes. She started from there and she's never looked back. So every person, every woman, every man, I mean, find what resonates with you, what likes with you and mm -hmm, start mm -hmm. from there. And if you're not mm -hmm. sure of it, definitely get a coach to help you yeah. follow through and do it properly. Mm, nice. And with regards to social media and the community we've built on them, what do you think about that? What's your opinion on it? I love social media. Mm -hmm. I've taken it for the good that it's offered. Mm -hmm. I've been on social media since 2014. I mean, and Facebook came around first and I was on that at two, mm -hmm. 2007. But I really enjoy the interaction with Instagram. That's one of my favorites. And you have so many other um, forms, which is a Snapchat. And it all depends where you are in your life. And I think you could look at social media if you're in a bad place and it's going to be bad for you. But if you're in a good place and you're utilizing it to mm -hmm. your advantage yeah. to create your, your business, to create, you know, what it, uh, social media is offering to you, that's when it really works. Mm -hmm. And I've been through the phases of um, social media is addicting, dopamine. I agree. Do so you, you have to have a mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely has mm -hmm. that. You have to be have a balance. I highly recommend keeping phone downstairs for charging. Don't have it in your bedroom. Have a window when you're on social media, and utilize it to the good. Look at social media on a good side of it. I just see the good. I see the good in everything. So mm -hmm. I look at the good of social media as well. Um, but there is the bad sides of it is. But I, I refuse to focus on that right now. And okay. I just teach my daughters that, for example, and teach everyone else that. Utilize it for what it's meant to be utilized. Engage with people. But if you're there to, and it's not working for you, you got to step away. Mm -hmm. So whatever's making you feel, acknowledge that feeling. How do you find those boundaries when you use it and you don't use it? I focus on how it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. So, and what makes me feel is when I set my boundaries. If I'm feeling very negative and social media, it could be a negative DM that comes in, mm -hmm. um, which is very rare, thank God. I mm -hmm. haven't had many of those. Um, and I've attracted a great following of really kind people. So I haven't had any issues with it. If I feel I'm on it too much, I feel it and I get anxiety. Mm -hmm. I step away and I acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. People that are on it too much and they feel that anxiety, they don't step away. Then it becomes an addiction. And if you're not aware of it, then it becomes a problem. And that's where social media can be a problem. So you need to be self-aware. Self-aware. And you need to also notice what's going on in your body yeah. in order to bring that into your awareness. But most people don't. Because they're not feeling enough. Because they're not they're feeling not enough. They're not trusting their intuition. They're not. Our intuition speaks louder than our mind. And if you can feel that and hear that and listen to that, you know when it's time to take a break. And how do you recommend people do more of that? Acknowledge it. Be self-aware of it. Acknowledge it. And if they're not able to acknowledge it, check your stress levels. Are you losing your temper? Mm -hmm. You know, See how you are in your lifestyle day-to-day -day basis. If something is off balance, find out what is creating that. And if it's social media, then there's your answer. If it's the kids, then find something that'll center all of you. Go to the beach, um, get off the TV, walk outside. Mm. Just self-awareness is really a good key word. Yeah, that's beautiful. Do you have any specific accounts you recommend on social media that empower you? Yours. Yay. Stefano. <laughs> <laughs> we are a health pod. That's a very <laughs> tricky question <laughs> because you know I'm going to name my three favorites. I really have to say I love all of them. I'm, I'm not going to pick a certain one. Okay. 
Um, if you go onto my Instagram account, Jennifer Seafit, and you see who I follow, it's, it's not a lot. I really am, you know, particular with who I want to follow because they're going to pop up in my feed. And what's in my feed is what's making me feel the way that I feel. So mm -hmm. I want positivity in my feed. Mm -hmm. And I like some of the accounts like Danae. Yes. Um, she has an account that's very authentic about self-empowerment and women power. It's really beautiful. And yeah. I think she's very authentic. Mm. So she would probably be one of my top ones because okay. she's honest and she's true to herself. Yes. And she gets a lot of, uh, um, I, I don't like the word, the connotation between haters, but she does get a bit, a few negative. Mm. And she doesn't allow that to stop her and she doesn't give her power away. She yeah. holds straight, strong mm. in her power and she posts about it and shares it with the world, which helps empowers us. Yeah, she is very empowering. And, um, that is true. Danae I Mercer. Her, yes. yes. Yeah. What do you have to say about women's empowerment? I feel we can be there for each other. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be jealous of each other. Mm -hmm. What we knew, we have to unlearn. Yeah. In high school, I do remember us women being very competitive, us girls being very competitive, and we felt that that's all we knew. We didn't have coaches that told us, you know, help each other, empower each other. It was basically first place, second place, and I think that's where we went wrong. And then that gave us the competitive point. So if you're in volleyball and you want to be first place and you want to win, we just competed with each other. I think there needs to be just women empowerment to me is coming together, centering yourself together, aligned together so that you can build each other up. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, the power is immense. Mm -hmm. And that to me is women empowerment. Build each other up and continue to do that. Yeah. That's so true. And that's exactly what we did with each other when we met. You Consistently know, we, we, supporting each other. We were supporting each other and watching each other and feeling inspired from yeah. each other and uplifting each other that helped us elevate. And we're very together. similar in the mm. works that we've done together. Yeah. Energetically. Yes. Coincidentally or serendipitously. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. The, the, our lifestyle together, yeah. how it all grew. You, well, when we met in... Dubai, you came from Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. to Dubai. You reached out to me. We met. We did a workout together. Yes. We became friends then. Yes. I realized we both were in fitness and nutrition. You were doing boot camps. I was doing one-on-one -on -one personal training. Mm -hmm. It's funny to where we were then to where we are now mm -hmm. because then I transitioned into boot camps, what you were doing. Mm -hmm. You're not doing boot camps now. <laughs> You've now transitioned to ice baths and breath work, <laughs> which I started doing as well. Yes. But it's the alignment of our work together, which I find is what's brought us together today. Yes. Very similar. We're yeah. literally mirrors of each other. Yeah, yeah. And I think the support we've given both of each other mm -hmm. has helped us be to where we are today. Yeah. And that's what in general for all women we need to do. That yeah. can really empower each other. Which reminds us how beautifully social media can be used yes. for empowerment. We because we met media. of social media and we've kept our relationship and friendship for so many years yeah. through that. So it's just a, a depiction of what mm -hmm. it what it can be. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think about spirituality? I feel that when you tap into it, it gives you a sense of freedom and peace mm. and a sense of feeling grounded and finding balance. And many people maybe fear away, fear that word because they're not, they don't know about it or they're not aware of it or they don't understand it. Mm. But I think if you can just tap into anything that makes you feel good, whether it's spirituality, whether it's whatever religion or anything you want to go towards that's making you feel and find freedom and peace, I say go towards that. So for me, in general, I just like to find anything, whether it's spiritual, that brings me grounded, finds groundness and balance and center. Mm -hmm. It just feels good. Yeah. What is your biggest lesson on this journey? Life is good. Mm -hmm. Life is good. It really is. But if we have a lot of noise and clutter in our head, we're not going to be able to see it. If you can release it, if you can ground yourself, if you can do the inner work, give yourself that self-love that many people I find lose along the way and find it again and start giving yourself that time and attention that you need, you'll start to feel that the noise starts to release. Mm -hmm. And and my biggest lesson would be really enjoy life and be present and stop thinking of the past and thinking of your future. Then you miss out on the most important part, which is the present. Mm -hmm. Like right now here with you, this part is very special and very exciting and creative and invigorating. And, and that's my biggest lesson. And I remind myself all, every day because we were talking about this the other day, the brain continues 
to remind us to forget. Yes. And we yes. have to constantly remember that release the brain, follow through with the heart. That's my biggest lesson is to trust your intuition and less thinking, more doing. Stay present. And that's a lesson that I've learned that helped me progress more in my life, get more success, receive more. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. that's when I feel is a big lesson. And how do you find that you connect more to your heart? Breathing, Breathing. breath work, ice baths, extreme mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. help ground me. And I feel that breath work is, is vital. We need it. It's free. It's free medicine. Mm -hmm. And you can access it at any time, any time during the day where you're feeling a lack of balance or, you know, um, stressful or stress or anxiety mm -hmm. and just reconnect to that. Yeah. How would you describe Jennifer if she had no titles? If I had no titles? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Who are you? A woman full of a lot of energy, like a six-year-old child. That's really who I am. And that's who I will continue to be. And sometimes in certain places, in certain situations, I have to remember that I am almost a 49-year-old grown woman, but deep down inside, I am just this free spirit, full of energy, full of life. And again, just wanting to be that light for, for people that can't see, because I used to not be able to see yeah. until a light was shed on me. And that was the six-year-old girl I always was. And you are so. such a light. You are such a <laughs> light. You. That is so accurate. So are so you. Thank you so much. Beautiful description. Thank you, yeah. Helene. Helene, if there was one thing you'd want to change right now hmm. of who you are, what would it be? Something I would want to change. Hmm. As you progress further, as you expand who you are and who you want to be, what's the one thing you feel you need to continue doing to become that better version of yourself, unless you feel you are that better version right now? No, I definitely feel that there's always room for growth and improvement and having the ability to be able to be self-aware of where you're at um, is essential. So I would say have more self-awareness mm -hmm. like in that. every present moment. What I find with myself is that I get carried away a lot of the times and I'm always thinking of the future of where I want to be. So just bringing myself back to this moment and have patience. Yes. So that's yes. the... That's great. That's yeah. great. That's a great reminder for all of us, for everybody. You have to align yourself with like-minded people. That saying we hear a lot, yes. surround yourself with like-minded people. I didn't understand it until I started working more on myself and self-awareness. You'll understand it more when you start giving yourself that, that self-love. Mm. And then you will align yourself with very much like-minded people. For you, for me, you are that person to me. And you are that person to me, Jennifer. So I feel I'm so, it. I'm so happy that you've come here and that you're in Cyprus and that you're in person <laughs> and that we've met finally and connected on such a deeper level, although the energetic connection was always, always there. there. And it's unbelievable how social media has brought us together. Yeah. And we are sitting here right now doing this. So I'm very grateful to have you here. Thank you for coming on and thank you for being you. Oh, thank you. And thank you for doing this and setting all this up. This We Health part is amazing. I love it. Great, great way to get messages across. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching this episode. It's been an absolute pleasure filming it for you guys. If you like the work that we are putting out into the world, please make sure you like this video and you subscribe to our channel. It really helps the work that we do. And if you would like to follow our journey on our IG accounts, as well as learn more about our services, we provide everything for you in the description below. Thanks for watching.